just another day at the Riverview Park and Zoo, except a big warning. Don't go in the water. <laughs> Don't go in the water. Uh, there's Ghostbusters in there. <laughs> You see the Ghostbusters? Okay, she's not a Ghostbuster. You're looking at Aaron Magali and Terry Cox, both with Orca, Autonomy Region Conservation Authority, and they are electrofishing. And before you get all excited about how it works, no, you're not allowed to do it. No, you're not. Um, it's a qualified course. These guys are qualified. They've taken special courses to do it. There's huge safety measures in place to do this. Joe Blow, angler guy, just can't go out and Sorry. electrofish. Yeah. So we're going to tell you all about why they do it, how it is helping. So in honor of Michelle being a true fish head, we're just going to dress her up in some electrofishing gear, which involves a lot of rubber and sweat, and it's not at all sexy. We'll make it sexy, Erin right, Magali. Since Air you're Mag here. Erin <laughs> Magali from Orca, we are doing electrofishing on the 5 o'clock show. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, this is the gear that you have. Again, right. we're going to reiterate, and Teresa and I mentioned this at the top of the show, this is not something for an angler to go out and do. This is a biology sort of research science background in terms of getting uh, data and learning from our environment, and you have to have specific courses to do this. And not to mention that an electrofishing unit costs as much as a small car. So, oh, yes. okay. I'll be so careful. we'll be gentle with the equipment. Okay, so All let's right. walk through it. So the first thing that you need, because we're dealing with electricity, stay dry. So you've got your waders on already. You're set. You also need these extremely sexy shoulder-length gloves. Oh, I like these. So you know these what I have? Kind yeah, of these are like around here. Evening gloves. They are like evening gloves. Okay, so. While you're dressing me, I'm just yes. going to ask you a million questions oh, yeah. because the purpose of electrofishing and what actually happens is which. So the unit that you're about to wear has a battery in it. It's a 12 volt battery. It's about this big and it delivers electricity through a probe into the water. The fish in the water feel that electrical current. It temporarily immobilizes them. They lose muscle control. There's a netter beside you if you're the electrofishing unit operator and the netter scoops those fish, puts them in a bucket and we look at what kind of species we have, what length, what weight, and basically what kind of fish population we have in the creek. Okay, so I'm gonna get this on. Yep. So My question you. is how far out does that probe reach, reach to the fish? In our training we were told it's about a 30 meter reach, mm. so it's pretty far. When we were electrofishing in Jackson Creek we really had to watch out for people coming down to the creek edge and dogs and so mm -hmm. on. So as the unit operator, our job is to make sure that nobody is coming close to that water and if they are to give a yell out and then the netter who's beside you uses one of the safety switches on the unit to turn the electrical current Lots off. Lots of uh, double standards yes. in terms of safety in here yes. to make sure that if you ever tripped and fell, went into the water, it's going to stop. It would turn off. Obviously. That's right. All right. So I'm going to help you on with this okay. so you can see what we've been contending with all So summer. in this creek right here, yep. who are you going to call electrofishers? <laughs> um, in this creek here, yes. you have different species of fish. How do you make sure, I mean, with a 12 volt, bat 12 volt battery, how are you going to make sure that the little fish and the big fish, which, I mean, is Feel the current? Well, not only that, but is one more at risk of being seriously harmed than someone else? Yes, larger fish generally are more affected by the current. And there are settings on the electrofishing unit to change the voltage and the frequencies. So how do you know that one of them is not going to be damaged Unduly by the volt? Affected? Well, generally electrofishing, it's deemed a non-lethal survey method. There are one or two fish that usually either through processing or through the fishing method itself get hurt. Mm. We try to not have that happen, but... Is it similar to tasering? I don't know. You don't know? No. <laughs> You've never electro I never thought you'd ask yourself. that question. <laughs> you weren't ready for that one. No. I if you take it out, is the charge still in the water? No. Is it only in the no, water? No, it's when only in the water when this is called the anode or the probe is in the water. Okay. So it's just a, an immediate in-out kind of And reaction. as soon as the fish go into the bucket, they're, they're back out. to mobilization. Yeah, as soon as they're in the net. So that's why you want your netter to be really quick to scoop those fish, get them out of the electrical zone and put them into the bucket. I'd be shocked at how many species are in this little creek. So stay with us. So we have uh, stunned and captured the fish. We have. Um, they're all safely alive, as you can see, swimming yes. around in our buckets. We don't keep them in the buckets for a long, long time, but we do need, as a condition of our uh, scientific collector permit for MNR, to measure and weigh them and identify them. They're called what? Creek chub. They have really big mouths. They're, they are predators. You can see how large their mouth is. <gasps> and a little 
Black Musa. Just kidding. Okay. Okay. I mean, I can. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> He's so fine. I was He's gonna... fine. I just add a little excitement to his day. I was going to put him in here for people. Oh, okay. So I panicked just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you did. It's okay. <laughs> this is a black nose day. He's got a little dark line on the very tip of his nose. He's got a little bit of uh, breathing coloration, some orange striping along his midline there. And black nose dace are relatively common in Pierre Rose creeks. We've caught them in quite a few of the creeks. Now, do people use these as bait? Yeah. Most of these are bait fish. Aww. That's what we tend to see. One of the surprises from our fishing survey this summer was that we caught a brook trout in Riverview Creek. Which no is way. Totally unusual. We weren't expecting it. They're often further upstream in Riverview because there's groundwater and it's a bit colder. But I think it's a good testament to our uh, restoration project. It was hiding underneath some of the overhanging branches and right by one of the crib walls that we had created when we restored the creek here. And the research that you're collecting at the end of the day is size, weight? Yep, species. And species. so we're trying to determine what kind of population is in the creek. By doing our electroshocking, we generally capture between 60 and 70 percent of the population. Wow. And then that gives us an idea of what kind of fish are in there so that when pressures occur like parkway, roadway extensions, things like that, and we know what type of protective measures to put around the creek. This is a blunt nose minnow. It's got a dot on its tail. It's got a very faint dot on its dorsal fin there. Mm -hmm. And it's got a really blunt nose, like its mouth is kind of underneath its snout. So sculpins you could mistake for round gobies, which are an invasive species. Ah. But they're different because when you look underneath them, I'll flip them over in a minute. Um, their pelvic fins, the ones underneath them, are separate, and gobies, this is hard to hold, sorry, <laughs> gobies have um, their pelvic fins fused, this is a central stone goby, they have reddish colored eyes, <laughs> stick your teeth, um, and they have a lower jaw that has like a hard ridge on it, what they do is scrape algae off of rocks. Thanks so much for this opportunity, ladies. This has been very interesting and uh, informative. Keep up the good work with electrofishing and uh, identifying species and water quality in our region. Thanks. All right, Newswatch First at 5.30 is next.